And we can even take a damn tour. Let's, let's take a damn tour. <laughs> Not two. I heard like a tire. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. I've never been on a damn tour. I haven't either. I really haven't. I'm not saying that just to be funny. I'm really never been on a I'm damn tour. I'm just saying it to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. We didn't know this was going to happen. We thought we were just going to come see the Hoover Dam. Turns out we're actually going to drive our RV over the Hoover Dam. And we're not going to drive off of the Hoover Dam like car. I just thought they had the Hoover Dam closed to vehicle traffic. I thought it was only foot traffic, but apparently not. So if you're curious about bringing your RV to the Hoover Dam, I read a blog post that said to go in on the Arizona side and park, and then you can walk down to the dam. Turns out that's wrong because the road over there is blocked. And so we had to come back to the Nevada side, had to come through the checkpoint station, where they opened up every single compartment in the basement of the RV. They checked the Jeep. A man came inside the RV and walked through. Basically what they're doing is just, uh, it's security. They're just checking to make sure nobody's bringing any explosives, weapons onto the property and over the dam. So the RV parking is on the Arizona side of the dam, which is why you have to cross there. Well, we survived. We did, and I like the weather here. I can tell it's hot, like a good hot. Uh, tip says 78. Yes. Well, I think we got as far away as possible when it comes to parking lots for Hoover Dam. So, we're in lot 15. It's a very back lot. This is where everybody comes and turns around and goes back over Hoover Dam. There was another Class A that was right here and I pulled up and they had actually detached their vehicle, drove down to the dam, closer parking lot, parked down there, and then came back up and hooked back up. So that's what we're gonna do, just because it's gonna be a long walk with all of our kids, I'd say a mile. So it only takes me oh, two minutes to probably get the Jeep unhooked. But in my opinion, if you're gonna be coming here in your RV, I would probably find a place outside of uh, the hoover dam area maybe a walmart parking lot in boulder city boulder city is not too far away so you might want to just park somewhere there if you have a tow vehicle and unhook and then drive into this area because uh, rv parking is definitely limited and it just depends on how big you are where you're actually going to be able to park hey we found a sidewalk he was walking I over there for a long time and then he was like, hey, there's a sidewalk. Yeah. yeah, actually I see it now. It goes all the way up there <laughs> where uh, we started. Aren't we, we just cute? Yeah, shows how much we pay attention. Oh, look at him waving. Did you get that? I don't know. He's in the shadow. Is he waving? Say <laughs> hello. Come hey, on, boys. This way. This way. way. What are those big tall things? I do not know. We'll find out. Hopefully we'll, in the visitor center we can figure out what those things are. Is it a visitor center? Yep. Wow. You guys see where it's like white rock and then red rock or brown rock? Yeah. Okay. The white rock is where the lake has been before. The lake has gotten all the way up there and so it's washed all that stone white. So when the lake gets really high, they let it out through here which is like a spillway. So this is your spillway where the lake gets up so high and it automatically will fall into this hole and then go down that canyon. I get it, and I can explain it back. Yep. Cool to see water going down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah.
Here's your first glimpse of the dam. What did Jason say? He said, what'd you say? Did you say, wow? <laughs> it's not wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Long ways down, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's why we didn't do the visitor center. Because it was like 40 bucks just for the visitor center. Gabriel and Jason were free, but everybody else. And it's ten dollars for everybody. So that's like 40 bucks. I kind of wish the visitor center was free. Me too. And it's not because of the fact that it's forty dollars is the reason why we didn't do it, but we've got four kids spending an hour at the visitor center is not an option. We just, it's not gonna last. So, yeah, what Lane said was, unless there's like hands-on things, but there wasn't. And so it's just exhibits and uh, they had a movie and a 12 minute slideshow. And I felt like the only thing we probably could have kept attention span would have been the 10 minute movie. And that would have been cool, but I just didn't see no need in paying 40 bucks just to do that. What we probably will do from a suggestion from a lot of our viewers is that just watch a YouTube video about Hoover Dam. And that way they can learn about the history and we don't have to pay 40 bucks to actually watch a 10 minute movie. Kids, kids, I gotta ask you a question. What did you think of Hoover Dam? It was awesome. It was awesome. What was your favorite part? Favorite part of Hoover Dam? Uh, my favorite part is looking down. Looking down? I want to see my My favorite part was how tall it is. What's your favorite part? Can you pick me up and show me? It's right down there where those holes are. Where that blue, we got like wand and green stuff was. So like yeah, the water? All the way down there. What was your favorite part? Pick up, pick up, pick up. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you. I did it this way on purpose. Um, favorite part? Come on. It out, you know. All of it. Nobody <laughs> got lost. <laughs> Let's hook up and go. Let's do it. We're terrible. Watch out, Grady. I don't want that to get on your camera. His canes were just nasty on the inside, uh, and so he took his feet, feet off. And they, so I had a, you should have seen him though before I wiped him down with wipes. Stinky feet. Well, they or were black. dirt like black. So we need to wash the shoes. We need to check and see if there's like a cleaning method to Keens for kids. Chacos. <laughs> okay, you're ready, boy. Do yourself a favor before you drive into California. Fill up on your diesel or gasoline in Arizona. You've seen that right. It was $4.99 a gallon for diesel. Regular unleaded, I think, was $4.89. It's almost five bucks a gallon either way. I uh, crossed the Colorado River right before we got into California and got diesel for $2.89 a gallon. So huge savings. So just make sure you fill up before California. And if you didn't know, California has a 55 mile an hour speed limit for anybody, RV or commercial truck that is towing a trailer. So that includes us because we have the towed, we have to go 55. Now, if you are in a motor home without a tow vehicle, from what I understand, you can travel the same speed limit as the other autos. But if you are in a fifth wheel travel trailer, having a towed behind your RV, then you've got to go 55. So we stopped just for a second. Lane had to change Gabriel's diaper and she had to access the uh, back kid slide where all the diapers are. Anyway, and then we got back on the highway, but when we did, I heard like a tire, like <laughs> uh, 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 uh. like that. And I thought, well, that's weird. I've never heard that before. And I looked back at the Jeep and the tires were rolling on the Jeep. But I, I didn't know what that was. And so anyway, I found another spot, pulled over, came back out here to look at the Jeep. The thing about a Jeep and why they're the number one vehicle for being towed four down is because of the transfer case. It's a manual transfer case. So you got two high, four high, neutral, and four low. And so in order for a Jeep to be able to be towed behind a motorhome four down, 
it has to be in the neutral position. That disengages the drive shafts from the transmission so the transmission is not spinning while it's being towed. So the process of doing that is two highs up here and you pull it down into four wheel drive. Then you have to move this into neutral. Once your transmission's in neutral, you pull this down to get it into neutral. But it was in neutral, I had it in the neutral position. So I'm like, well, what in the world's going on? One way of testing it is starting the Jeep, putting your transmission in drive, and then pushing on the gas and see if it'll move forward. And it did. I put it in neutral, see if it would move backwards. And it did with this in neutral. And I do not understand how or why that happened. So I went through the whole process again, then tested it again. And this time it is not moving forward or backwards. The bad thing is that this is how you screw up your transmission. Whenever you're towing it behind there, your transmission's spinning the whole time. And so this, I'm assuming, has been turning my transmission ever since we left Hoover Dam and we are now in Southern California. So I, I don't know how many hundreds of miles. So I don't know what it's gonna be like once we get somewhere, but I'm just so confused on how that happened, how it was in neutral, but yet transmission still engaged. I might have to call Jeep and ask them about it. The good thing is the Jeep is under warranty, so if something happens, hopefully it'll happen while it's still under warranty. And I don't know what's going on. The motorhome looks like Lane just shut it off or maybe one of the kids shut it off. So I better get back in there and we'll get back on the road. But I just wanted to tell you guys what happened. So we made it to our BLM spot. We are at Joshua Tree North BLM land. It's just a great big open desert area. And we just picked a nice little spot that's open and flat and close to the entrance. I don't want to drive miles and down the uh, dirt road because it can go quite a ways back. But what I want to show you guys is we got here and I'm trying to get level. And I noticed that as my jacks went down that I didn't really feel the coach moving much. Came out to inspect why. Look at that. I've never seen that before happen, but it, it my jacks just went down into it. So I'm going to have to retract them. Put some, uh, I have just some levelers, the plastic levelers that are square orange ones. I'm going to put four or five of them around, build a base that's square to kind of give it a wider footprint and hope that it'll level us out a little bit. So I used what I got and it worked. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's my only option. I really don't know what other like motor home people use. I know fifth wheel people, I've seen those tall bucket things from um, Anderson, I think it's Anderson, Anderson hitches, anyway, whatever it is. I've seen those and then I've seen a uh, travel trailer and fifth, fifth wheel people use these, but I've never seen like what motorhome people use. I don't know if they use these or use something different. Um, I've seen people put pads on those, but I still don't think even a pad would have helped. It had, it had to be a larger footprint to really help. And of course, this thing weighs 27,000 pounds. I don't know what would be the best thing to use for another situation like this if I come across it. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Okay, back in the Jeep. To get it back into the drive position, you go back into neutral. And this is where sometimes I don't know why, but it does not want to go. So I get into four wheel. There, you just gotta be forceful with it. I wish it was a little bit smoother, but it's not, sometimes. Anyway, I am back all the way forward into two high. Now let's go into reverse. And it backs up. Now let's test it forward. And we're going forward. 
So I messaged a buddy of mine that's got a Jeep and he's also an RVer, asked him if he had any ideas or why it would do this. So Jeep's procedure, like I said, neutral on the transfer case, park on the transmission. So that means if my transmission was engaged, then my tire should not have been moving. It, that it would have been in park and that it would just been dragging my tires along the way. I've seen that happen before. I've seen a lady leave a campground and she did not have her setup properly and her tires were just she was just dragging it so that wasn't the case with me but with everything being in neutral and the transmission and everything to be honest with you he don't know i don't know it could have just been something that happened that just would have caused it to chirp he thinks i should go check have it checked out at a jeep dealership just to make sure everything's working and everything's fine and there's no problems which i probably will do but not now just because i don't want to have to deal with that while we're in california a lot of those things like that, it's just so much simpler to do when we're home instead of, because if, if we're without a vehicle for a while, this vehicle, it, it's just a pain. So we're just gonna wait till we're at home. So anyway, I'm not too worried about it just because of like he said, my tires would have been dragging. If, I, if it would have not been set up right, and you know, if the trainee would have been engaged, I would have just been dragging the system. So anyway, um, I'm not sure if anybody has any insight, feel free to leave a comment down below on that. But um, I will have it checked out eventually. For right now, we're just gonna drive it and see how it operates, make sure that it's uh, shifting fine and all that. So I'll keep you guys posted on that.